We were much better in transition tonight at times in the second half in particular. Uh, I thought our zone offense really got clicking and looked the way that I'd like it to look. Uh, in the second half, we shot 47% for the game and 57% for the second half from the field uh, against the fourth best field goal percentage defense team in the nation. And uh, that's saying something. That's good. Now, at the same time, we sure can't seem to make things very easy on ourselves. And, uh, you know, a couple of missed free throws here, a turnover there, uh, and them hitting a bunch of bombs again. Uh, seems to be a recurring theme, so we better go ahead and pad up that lead as much as we can going down the stretch because it's, uh, it's been difficult to get to lock down on, on terrific perimeter players uh, that are hot against us late in games. And that's something certainly that as we go forward to tourney time and kids are playing for their seasons and you see heroic performances, we've got to get better at that area, no question about it. But uh, that's right, two-game streak. I looked at my phone. The Mac is not calling for a breakup of this dynasty quite yet. But at the same time, uh, it feels a lot better. We've got another home game coming up that we got to focus up and uh, try to crawl back toward the, uh, the middle or the, who knows, the middle of standings. Let's start with the middle of standings. We had, we talked about the specific scenarios. I, here's how it is. I didn't call for a foul. I did not call for a foul. If we got certain scenarios occur, if we had a, a chase situation, if we had a, we were ready to step out and bump and try to commit a foul off the ball. The other thing we were ready to do is to, uh, if we got a guy dribbling sideways, we were going to foul. So it wasn't a definitely no, don't do it. Uh, Stevie actually, I thought he made a really smart play. We switched that out. He got very physical in the corner uh, with the shooter. And if they would have called a foul, it would have been on the floor. I thought he made a really, really, really good play where you're forcing the ref to either call a foul on the ground or to, uh, to not call it. And now you've got a guy a little bit rattled. But uh, our seniors made enough play to get, plays to get it done. I, I know this. I was, I was certainly not ready to watch Lee Jack another three. And uh, that was enough of that for a day. And uh, I, I think it played out perfect the way it did. And it was kind of a hybrid foul if uh, thing. And again, I think with the look that they got at the end, I thought – I thought our guys did an excellent job of executing it. That did that. We forced a difficult shot. Yeah, you know, I think in a couple of those, they wouldn't have had to have been close games had we held on to some things. So I don't know if we're trying to prove how good we are down the stretch. I, I don't need any. I don't get any personal gratification over a close win. Is I'd, I'd rather win by forty. It's more fun. I'd rather have Eastern Michigan wins win over us than ours over there. Uh, but at the same time. Uh, we have made enough plays, enough stops. Last two games, we made a stop to win the game. That's for a team that isn't exactly locking down. At least we got those possessions right, and that's a, that's a good thing. And we haven't. The other thing we haven't done is we haven't just blown a coverage. We haven't. Uh, you know, the the first step to being to being a really good team is just to be solid, and maybe we're taking steps toward that. Yeah, we did talk about that just the other day. I was dead set on doing it, going into the huddle, and I was kind of talked into it by my seniors and my staff, the way we did it, and I'm glad we did it. We couldn't have worked out better. You try, we, tried, we tried throwing different people at them. You know, the problem is, is that how are you going to double? One of them's a step back three. There's no double you can really run at them. Uh, You know, the the Galuli guy that got Kerrigan is probably your best option at that point, but that's not right either. Uh, they were he, – he was wonderful. We are still working on developing a, a lockdown. Some of our longer, more athletic guys that will develop into really good defenders still need to get stronger to become good defenders. I think we've got guys that can become locked down in this program – I also think that a good gust of wind can blow some of them over sometimes. So, no, no. I, honestly, what what took his minutes away were Kyrie. 
him and Kyrie, think of him as one person, basically, with, with this team. And uh, I thought Kyrie smothered Lee to, and held him to 33 points all night long. How could I go away from that? <laughs> no, I, I really liked the way Kyrie was playing, and I liked the, the looks that he was forcing. I did. I, I, you know what? Reese sat there and watched Mike play a lot. Maybe it was time we switched it up a little bit. But, you know, Mike ended up with 14 minutes. Ree ended up with 18 uh, you're right. That was a long time for Mike to switch. It was nothing he did, and it was absolutely, absolutely nothing physically. It was just a, a feel. One of the reasons we made that switch had nothing to do with defense at all. Uh, when we started really playing well in the second half offensively and we started to shoot the ball and get good looks, we put Ree out front in our zone, and he could see over that front line a little bit better. And we practiced it zero times. It was just a hunch I had looking at how they were lined up, and I thought Ree handled that really, really well. And not only that, I thought Treg handled it really well, I thought Tone handled it really well, and I thought Mo handled it really well. I thought we had a high-level functioning offense in which all five guys were involved, and I can't say how many times that's, uh, that's happened, but that's the only way you score 76 points against an unbelievably solid uh, zone defense out of Eastern Michigan. Well, we it was – at the beginning, I thought we missed a lot of finishes around the hoop, which compounded our offensive woes. But I also thought that the ball didn't get past that. And I think of it like a, like a fence. The ball's got to go over the front fence so you can play with numbers advantage. And they do a good job of trapping out of that, but we worked against those traps all week. Uh, the bottom line is the ball got below the free throw line extended enough that we were able to do some things. It's really tempting to sit back. Pass back and forth out top, you can get away with those passes, but you're, it's fool's gold. You're not accomplishing anything. You want to attack high post, short corner. Uh, again, first half, Stevie did a good job of getting into some gaps and gave us a little spark that got us going initially. And in the second half, uh, Ree dumping over the top of that, that first line of defense uh, made a big difference. But I'll tell you one thing, when we're sitting there at – about a two for 13 burger in the first uh, second time out. I'm thinking to myself, this is kind of familiar right now, and this isn't very fun. Uh, but I mean, you, you take away that really slow start. We really played well offensively. Our efficiency was as good as it's been. You save, save a few turnovers, and it would have been a, a pretty cool night. That was a pretty cool night. They remind me a lot of. Uh, Bill Carmody at Northwestern did that, and they could really get you on your heels. The next thing you know, you're, you're shooting contested jumpers, and that's exactly what you – common logic is when you play a zone team, you shoot a lot of jumpers, don't get to the free throw line. Well, you can't give in to common logic if you're going to have success the way we did tonight. And uh, <laughs> it was funny because I would say that it was very clear to me that after the Eastern Michigan guy, game, guys were a little leery of our scheme. And so we talked about it. They didn't think that this would work, that would work. Uh, we did the same thing tonight. We just executed it better. It, it, no one coach has the perfect framework, perfect recipe. You try to put kids in situations where they're making similar reads over and over and over again, and eventually they get it. That's the learning curve. They're college kids. Uh, they sit there in the hallowed halls of academia all day learning. There's no reason they shouldn't learn on the basketball court. I'll tell you, he's, he's showing some signs of really becoming a pain in the butt to deal with down there. I mean, on both ends. Uh, he had one block that was really, really good, kind of came out of nowhere. But a guy, he's more attentive. He's gotten markedly better defensively as this year goes on. And a trait that's underrated on the defensive end is being able to grab the rebound that ends the possession. And that's a place where our offensive rebounding percentage last year was not very good, and it's gotten better this year, and that's in no s small part due to uh, Big Tone in there. He's, got, he's only a sophomore. He's got a lot of good things ahead of him. Anything else? Um, you lost Kyrie and Ryan Taylor towards the end. They, they fouled out. Did that force you to kind of change the game plan? Yeah, defensively in particular. Uh, Again, we, we were having success seeing over the front line of that. We, we, we lost our ability to score in the same way. We had to get into some more gaps and maybe throw bounce passes around instead of just going over the top of the thing. And then defensively, yes. I mean, 
they're a long team, and now I'm throwing out there two guys that I look eye to eye with, and that's not good for anybody. Uh, we got away with it, but it wasn't ideal. I, I like guys taller than me. If I have to look down to you, uh, your odds of getting a scholarship here are minimal. I've got no Napoleon complex. I'll crank my neck all day. That's no problem. I try not to harp on that stuff too much because, again, I, I've been trying to be consistent with it all year. You don't want to ride the roller coaster. That being said, if it didn't make them mad watching that tape this week, if it didn't, then they didn't have a pulse. And I, I don't think there's any question we came out with pretty good energy. Even what, what – you know, we came out at Eastern Michigan. We missed a bunch of shots early, and it sucked the energy right out of the room. And uh, – it was pretty low wattage in there that night anyway, I would say. But tonight we didn't, we didn't allow missing shots to deter us from continuing to play hard and try to do the right things. And that's a, that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. Uh, any game where you have 15 turnovers, uh, those certainly be things to go back and look at decision making. At the same time, uh, I thought we had some guys. I thought Treg made more good reads than bad reads tonight, and that's a that's a step in the right direction. Although he pulled an Irvin Magic Johnson in the full court again, and it's all part of the growing process. Anybody else? Okay, class, you're off the hook. Take care. <laughs>